Hello and welcome back to the Osceola's First Impressions. My name is Pat Burnham. I'm joined by Osceola editor Bob Ferrante and we're sitting outside the practice fields after day three of fall camp, Bob. And uh, we mentioned something on our Seminole sidelines yesterday about intensity yesterday when we thought maybe it was lacking. There was no sign of that today as uh, FSU put on pads for the first time and uh, saw Amari Williams, he's passing by us, have a couple of nice catches in today's practice. Uh, but uh, yeah, the intensity level stepped up. You, the players responded, the coaches responded. Just your overall thoughts on practice. Coach Morvell was lighting the fire under a couple of butts out yes. there on the practice field. We heard uh, a lot of coach voice, a couple four-letter words, but that, that, it's all in good fun and in teaching moments for a lot of these guys. I think the response you see from those teaching moments yeah. from a lot of guys, um, obviously I'm watching a lot of receiver DB one-on-one, -on -one, so you see that competition, and there's been a lot of good competition there. Um, constant coaching, I think, with Norvell, Tony Tokars, the quarterbacks. Um, it, it's it's good to see. I think the baby steps as part of part of this camp so yeah. far. Well, and of course the offshoot today, being in pads, we got to see a little bit more contact work than we got to see the last couple of days. And you know, we uh, one of the guys I paid attention to. Uh, we all have been asked questions about is Jacob Rizzi, the, the transfer from Harvard, and we liked the way we saw him bend and move in shorts. And you know, we feel like that was uh, validated today. He held his own first day in pads, playing a new position, center. We played right tackle at Harvard. Uh, I, he had two really good reps uh, in what the half line inside drill, which is half the offensive line going against half the defensive line and he was really impressive about it where you saw some what you saw from Jacob today I think we're all going to say he's smart and, and he's this yeah. and that he fits I think the term that the Harvard coach uh, who's now retired had told me is he fits he belongs at this yeah. level um, I think we often think FCS to P4 jump is, is a lot um, this is a guy you're kind of developing for the yeah. future for for year two what does this year two in 2025 look like I, I kind of view him as a backup option yeah at center right now, but he fits at this level. Harvard has produced a lot of P4 types on the O-line, has put a lot of guys in the NFL. So there, there is that feeder. I'm not sure a lot of FCS coaches like that, but it's part of where the game is. And, and Jacob looks like he belongs. Yeah, he does. And listen, uh, as you mentioned before we started to uh, tape this, you know, he did get indoctrinated a little bit today. He's going up against another caliber of competition, and he got to go up against Daryl Jackson. So he really did get the full scale FBS welcome to college football going yes. against him. Now, uh, there are some other standouts in half line, uh, but TJ Ferguson looked really good. Richard Leonard, uh, Richie Leonard did too. And of course, that's no surprise with Richie. He is known as kind of a mauler from his days at uh, Florida, and it looks like he's going to be a good, obviously, a good. Uh, addition to this offensive line and uh, you had a couple of guys on defense that stood out I thought that Daniel Lyons had a really good day in half line uh, of course you know we could, we could talk about Josh Farmer and Gerald Jackson about every day I thought across the board uh, Josh Farmer had an excellent day whether it was in half line one-on-ones uh, you know in full inside he had a couple of nice plays in full inside live inside and then of course uh, you know he made a couple of TFLs in team uh, and you know they we did more they had an extensive team period today what were your thoughts on that we saw Brock and DJ get a ton of reps and you know uh, there were some incompletions but we had some drops too but we also saw some great catches uh, Kentron Portier had to catch a practice uh, down the far sideline uh, Nice throw by DJ, he threaded it through two defenders and a uh, leaping catch by uh, Kentron. He continues to impress. But uh, yeah. what do you think of the quarterbacks overall in today's practice? Yeah, I thought Luke hit Kentron on a, on a really nice ball. Um, also, Kyle Morlock had a wide receiver type of catch yes. where he extended both hands and grabbed that ball full stride. Uh, Mike Norvell running yeah. down the field. You see a lot of Mike Norvell running down the field and celebrating with the receivers, wants to high five them doesn't want them to celebrate until they are down the field. We did see one time Haiki Williams caught a ball, started celebrating, then realized what he did, and Mike got on him pretty fast. So it's it's a process, yeah. <laughs> even, even from route, catch, yeah. run, then celebrate. Mike is, is wanting to make sure everybody keeps it in perspective. Yeah. Um, the most extensive 11 on 11 yeah. that we expected a lot of that yeah. today, but happy to see a lot of good competition today. Yeah, and I think the, what you mentioned, Kyle Morrill, like I think the one thing we've seen the three days into camp is that he is going to be a bigger part of this passing game than he was now that Jaheim Bell is gone, and you lose Keon and obviously uh, Johnny Wilson. But uh, listen, I think that you see the quarterbacks have a trust in Kyle. You, we've seen every quarterback that throws to him. You know, he's been a guy that they look for, and. Uh, you know, I think that's something I thought both quarterbacks uh, probably looked better today than they did the two days in shorts. 
I would agree. I think you know, with, with Kyle, it, it was always viewed as what is he going to give you in year two. This guy is, is, is somebody who's going to be a bigger piece of the puzzle, obviously with Jaheim out, um, you know, onto the NFL. I think Kyle can be, he thinks he's going to be a better blocker. Yep. We think he's a better route runner. He said he's focused on route running and really worked with Chris Thompson on a lot of different facets of his game. Um, I think Kyle's a big piece to the puzzle. Uh, we're still curious who the other tight ends yes. are going to emerge there, but that's to yeah. be seen in the coming days. Well, we, we saw Amari Williams as he just passed by us. He was involved in the pass game, had a couple of nice catches today. Saw Courtney in, in there. And, you know, of course, uh, FSU is going to be rely heavily on the run game. And we saw two running backs have really good days today. Keziah Holmes popped a couple of nice runs, a long run, one lap, really long run, and got a great blocking from the first team. I don't know if it's first team offensive line or not, but offensive line did a great job. Broke for a hole from him. And then Singletary really flashed today. He had some nice runs, and really you see his elusiveness and his ability to get to full speed fast. And then a couple of young guys that stuck out, one young guy that stuck out to me on the defense was Kai Bates. He had a couple of pass deflections today. Uh, Fintrell Cyphers had a nice day. Uh, but overall, I thought it was a very competitive day between the two sides of the ball, and I'm sure that, that's a good sign when you're in pads. Uh, you know, the, the offense has had two days to acclimate back to timing and get, get the timing back. But, uh, you know, obviously a big – that was a – Seem to be a little bit longer practice than usual. The players have tomorrow off as FSU will host uh, about 60 prospects for an elite camp. We will have coverage of that throughout the weekend. Uh, they register at 12 tomorrow and they'll be on the field around 3 30. Uh, we saw Solomon Thomas and Brady Smigel here today, so that was nice to see. Uh, Solomon looked great. Uh, Brady, uh, his father was walking out and he gives, he, you know, his father's a high school football coach and they're practicing in California right now. And he goes, I stuck away from a couple days because I, I just can't get away from this place. And so uh, I think. That's probably when the staff hears that the father can't stay away, obviously. But I think I thought, you know, again, a, a great sign for Florida State that Brady's been on campus now three times, different times for unofficial visits in about a period of three months. And then, of course, uh, you know, I think everyone, just because, uh, you know, that Solomon had not been around a lot over the spring uh, and the fall or the winter, uh, I think everybody's glad to see him here at practice. But uh, a big day at Florida State as they got into pads. They'll be off tomorrow. Then Sunday, we're expecting them to be in full pads. And we'll be back with you with first impressions uh, on Sunday.